morning everybody update on the r max it's a year update for me i'm a little late on this video um, i didn't really have time and the weather's kind of gross to be walking around outside and i didn't figure you want to look at my face so we're just gonna watch the road as i go through here but i wanted to touch base with everybody there's been some people that have followed me since i bought the machine and i've been able to go through the growing pains and the experience of having it uh, but for the first year Sad news, uh, I'm getting rid of the R-Max 4. Uh, I've been able to enjoy that machine. I wish I could say I've enjoyed it all year, but it's uh, it's been broken as much as it's been usable. Most of which is due to part supply. Uh, so if you haven't watched the videos before, I lost my transmission at two miles, or excuse me, not two miles, two hours. And uh, it took them the better part of two months to get that fixed and get it back in my hand. So I lost two months of riding time right when it was new. I rode it for about a month or two and uh, took it on a, an ATV park ride, just pretty basic trails and whatnot. I, I got it on a trail and I was off camber hill and broke a front axle and I mean it disintegrated the front axle. And, and mind you, this is an all stock machine so there's really no excuses on that one way or the other. But lost the front axle, took them two months to get me a front axle. I got that fixed and it, it was good for a long time. I started to develop a rear end noise and I documented that on some videos i let my dealer know i even took it to him at one point because i was kind of concerned about it for a ride i was going to go uh for the new year's break up in arkansas and um so headed to go on the ride take it to the, the dealership probably a month early and they say oh we, we don't hear anything there's nothing wrong with your machine so i get it back immediately the, the sound's still there starts getting worse and worse and worse and then uh I was coming out of the woods and this whole time we, I haven't been on any more trail rides it's just driving up and down my gravel roads and fire roads the deer camps and uh, whatnot something popped a little harder uh, I'm losing an axle is what I figured out is going on I finally let the dealership know ruined the ride for me I, I did go on the ride but I had to ride with somebody the whole time I had just invested money in it already so I couldn't stay home so went on my ride didn't have the R-Max for that I have been waiting for an axle now going on two months again they have no eta on when the axle is going to be here and um talked to several yamaha reps and they were sympathetic and they give you this spill and i'm just frankly i'm a little disappointed in yamaha i understand covid and, and everything but there's no aftermarket support for these machines i figured by now super atv or somebody would have come out with an axle and I, I i get it axles break i'm fine with that but when i break an axle i expect to be able to buy one and put one in it uh, warranty aside i did have the three-year warranty with this machine but the warranty doesn't do a damn thing for you if they can't fix it so that being said again i am going to sell the r max i've put a deposit down on a 2022 maverick x3 rr that's a big difference in machines but as i ride i realize that uh my taste in machines are a little different than what i originally expected i bought the r max because it's got pretty high performance for what it is bought the four seat because i thought well i could really use those two seats sometimes and truthfully none of that is true the r max has enough horsepower to keep up with all the big boy 1000 non-turbo machines no problem but when it comes down to it if you want a high performance machine it's just not it uh flat out wide open it can't hang with any of those other machines um uh, do I regret buy, buying it? No, not really. I, I really think looking at it now, the, the machine's priced a little too high for the horsepower. Yamaha could easily get 120, 130 horsepower to this machine, and that's what I think they should have done to begin with, to, to separate it out from everybody else. I mean, your Talons, your YXZs, all those, all those other machines are going to have to step up their power, but I don't want to go too far down that road. Again, I am selling the R-Max, unfortunately and uh going to can-am my dad's got a can-am several of the buddies i ride with have can-ams and the motors are bulletproof transmissions are more or less bulletproof i mean you'll eat a belt here and there just because that's the nature of those machines but yeah that's it guys sorry to uh let anybody down that's looking to buy an r-max but at this point in time i can't recommend them until they start getting part supply uh problems corrected and hopefully that is the case because it is a really good machine it's probably in its class the most versatile powerful machine you can buy i don't think anything else checks the boxes off there's the general and then uh the mav what are they not the maverick it's the commander i did look at a commander xtr i'm sorry not xtr xmr 
but at the end of the day it's just a hundred horsepower machine so i'm not gaining anything by jumping ship to the non-turbo machines i think the maverick's gonna scratch that performance itch for me and as far as hunting and things are concerned we've got a four-wheeler at home i can ride a four-wheeler to the deer stand just as easy as i can a side-by-side -side. so if you guys got any questions hit me up see you later